All right, today's little daily rehab is about shoulder and scapular coordination and endurance. And I've got three little exercises that are not done often, but we get them for people who are doing sports specific work and need a little bit more control and a little bit more endurance throughout their shoulder and rotator cuff. So here's the first one. When you do your external rotation with a band, which is the absolute gold standard, so if I just wrap it around there, in fact, I'll come around here a little bit more, this is a bit easier. If I come around here, anything hard, anything solid. This is a medium band, so I don't really need a really heavy one. So remember when you're doing this one, this is your external rotation. What we do for endurance is oscillation. So we do little movements like this, okay? But this is the hard part. There's a bit of endurance going on here through the rotator cuff, all right? I'm not doing a very high load because the band is not very much, but there's a lot of control coordination going on here because I want to try and keep that elbow absolutely sort of almost still, meaning pivoting on one area. So I do about sort of 20 or 30 little repetitions in what we call the inner range, okay? Then you go straight to mid-range. So you, then you're doing the same movement. Now, the movement back and forth is about 10, 15 centimeters. That's all it is, now I'm starting to feel that already. But this is where you get the endurance part. So you're getting a very minor fatigue, a good feeling back here and down around the rotator cuff. Okay, so you're getting a bit of, you'll feel it down in the deltoid. It feel like your deltoid's getting a bit fatigued. And hey, your deltoid's doing a little bit of work, but it's mostly rotator cuff in there. And so you've got to make sure you're in a good scapular position as well. So there's my sort of 20 or 30 mid-range. And then you go in the, that range out there. So this is the inner range. So outer range here, meaning the length and position of the rotator cuff. There's your mid-range and there's your inner range. And then this is the hard one because you've got to try and do it. And this is where your coordination really starts getting hard. You might have to slow it down a bit because I don't want to start using my wrist. I want to still pivot at the elbow and then sometimes I might forget my hand here to help me guide what's going on and then I'm really just going to start getting from some fatigue. Now, I say about 20 or 30, you might get fatigue at 10, all right? So start off easy, build yourself up so you don't fatigue mid-range and have to stop because you want the, the outer range, mid-range and inner range for that rotator cuff external rotation. Now that's just at neutral, okay? So when you get advanced, you can go into stage two, which is up at 45. Now you can go again, you think inner range, sort of here, mid range, and then outer range. It gets way harder. And then you're gonna go up at 90 degrees way up here. Now that's getting very specific for the shoulder. So for, if the Joe Blow, anyone at home is just trying to get some control back, some coordination, some endurance, stay down here for now. This is more sports specific higher, but once you've achieved that and you've sort of ticked that box. So that's your rotator cuff. The second one I want you to do is a scapular pull, like a retraction and depression. Now, what I like doing, and this seems really simple, but it's actually, coordination wise, reasonably hard. I'll probably get a couple of bands because you're going to do a pull down over something high. Then you're going to do like a lat pull down type movement or like a chin up movement, but I want you doing it with bands. Okay, so bands through like that. It's easy to set up at home. Now, you go down a bit lower so you get a bit of height going on here. What you're going to do is a lat pull down. Okay, so it's shoulders down and through here, and I want you going on that nice 45 degree angle, but the hard part is, is trying to keep these even. So you're trying to keep your shoulders down, hands go up, and then you work on letting those shoulders elevate to that full elevation position, like you are when you're up into that top end of a shoulder press or the top end of a lat pull down. So it's pull down, pull through, and you're trying to keep them even. Now, if you've got a mirror in front of you, that's really helpful. So this is not strength training. This is coordination training, trying to get your left versus right perfect. Because most people, when they do a lap pull down on chin up, they don't know which side is doing more of the work. Okay, so this is what's going to get you your left and your right hand a little bit better synchronized. And this is going to help you with patterns of movement. Now, I'm always banging on about patterns of movement because it's so important especially for shoulders, but also for hips and knees. You've got to get the left versus right 
as even as you can, because listen, we're humans. We're going to have one side different to the other, okay? So that means our brain pathways, our motor patterns are going to be different. So when we do things like a pull down, if you've got a fixed bar or a chin up like that, you won't know what the difference is. And that's when people run into trouble and come into my clinic with an injury because they've overloaded one side. So this is going to help you try and improve not necessarily strength, okay, but patterns of movement. So when you go down on that pull down, you are trying to keep things beautifully even and you're not off center, off kilter, or one shoulder's out or flaring out over here. You're trying to keep things absolutely beautifully good. Hopefully that looks even for you. And then making sure that then you transition that into your workouts, okay? So a bit of practice here to try and improve what's going wrong as far as your movement pattern goes to see, get that correct. And then you'll find that hopefully when you do pull downs and chin ups and rows and that sort of thing, you don't run into problems because you've got one shoulder moving different than the other. So that's your pull work. The last one is a press one. Now this one, it's really easy. You just simply use medicine ball. Now that's only one kilo and that's for demo purposes. You can go heavier than this and you can go obviously with a heavier the larger they get. Now this one is for a bit of coordination. So when you're pressing, what you're going to do is this movement here. You're going to do a go through a scapular press and down into a shoulder press. Now this may seem easy but you've got to stop that ball falling out of your hand, okay? Now, if you want to make it harder, you put it like that, okay? So this is working on your control, almost like think of balance, right? Think of balance. And you're trying to go through your press movement and making sure your arm is perfectly moving, okay? Remember, there's not too much load going on. You're going to start off with trying to make sure. Think, look at this press movement. I'm scapular protracting so when I come down scapular retract and then down with my elbow on that nice beautiful 45 degree angle straighten my hand push up again okay so when I arrive my hand and the ball is sitting directly over the shoulder so there's a nice compression movement through here okay that's where you should be ending not way out here or above your head or anything like that okay so you're working on just simply pressing the ball now I would start with that little light ball. That's pretty light, but it's good for your control, especially if you're not very coordinated through your shoulder or you're recovering from you know, things like an injury or surgery where you're really losing the connection between here and your shoulder. Then you increase your weight, okay? Once you've got the weight increased a little bit more, you'll probably find it's harder stability-wise because there's more, you know, as soon as the ball moves one way, it's harder for you to control it backwards. And that would be your first one. What I would do after that, is use your Swiss ball. Okay, now that, you think, well, hang on, that's gonna be heavier, this is gonna be lighter, but this is harder coordination-wise and balance-wise. So you go then to a Swiss ball, okay, and this gets really hard, all right? So not hard strength, hard coordination. So you're gonna push this up, and you can see I'm struggling already. So this is a learned movement pattern, and this will really work out all the control mechanisms that I've gotta do to try and get my shoulder stable. You see how hard that is already. So I haven't practiced this for ages, but I know what I need to do. And the more I practice, the better I'm gonna get with that. So work on all those three components. You've got your rotator cuff oscillation and endurance work, which helps you with a bit of coordination through the elbow, through to the shoulder to keep that pivoting in one position, which then helps work on your control work in your shoulder, which is half the rotator rotate a cuff's job. Then you've got your pull down, trying to get your symmetrical movement between left and right, and then your press movement, working on your control and balance through your press movement. So give those three a crack. See you next time.